What's up guys? This is Eric Ashton Spooner. I'm back for another episode and segment of Champion of Your Soul. I'm super excited today. I have a friend of mine, a guest here, Michael Galante, actor extraordinaire. We're about to have a really intense talk just for you. Stay tuned. Michael, I'm just I'm just so happy that you joined me today. Um, Thank you for having me. Definitely, man. I'm just excited about this. So, just just before we get into some real intense uh, conversation, tell me what brought you into the form and the art form of acting. I was in dental school, pursuing that, and in the middle of that, I realized I don't really like this very much. <laughs> So around that time, my friends had invited me. I was living in New York, upstate New York with my, with my parents. Yeah. And they invited me to live in the city, New York City, which is like a really fun place to live. And I was like, yeah, I'd like to live in New York City. So I, I moved in, told my parents, you know, I want to move to New York City. And they said, okay, well, can you afford rent? I go, yeah, I can afford rent, which I actually could because my friends gave me a deal in, in like a New York City apartment, which was okay. incredible. Okay. Around that time, I was like, I, I think I want to take an acting class. So I took my first acting class and I saw what these artists were doing on stage. Yeah. And I said to myself, if I can make money doing that, I'm gonna be the most fulfilled, happy, satisfied person in the entire world. Really? So I started training, I started taking acting classes okay. and, and left school, left dental school and went full throttle into trying to be a working actor. And wow. it took a while, yeah. and it took a yeah. lot of hard yeah. work and determination and a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, but uh, I'm grateful to say, it, you know, it ended up happening. You're here yeah. now. Extremely wow. grateful. When we talk about these subjects, it's, you know, it's hitting close to home for me, it's hitting close to home for you as well. In the entertainment industry, where it's focused, it's this focus really a lot on the ego. You know, everything is focused on the ego, right? Yeah. Everybody's driven by the ego in a lot of instances. Yeah. Not everyone, but in most cases, that's what's promoted. Yes. When a guy like yourself who has, in my opinion, from the short time I've known you, I feel like you have a large capacity for people. When you have a large capacity, which means that you have a big heart for the world. Yeah. Um, you are sensitive to a lot of the agents and elements of your surroundings and your environment. For your mental health, how have you coped personally with some of the uh, hard times, some of the dark times, trying to be an actor, trying to be an artist in this world? You know, I found taking care of myself in terms of health has yeah. really helped. It's almost become a ritual for me. Yeah. I discovered, I don't know if you've heard of uh, hot yoga, no. It's this yoga where you go into a studio and it's like 105 degrees, it's like a sauna. Uh -huh. And you just do this, this stretching and these body exercises and all these calisthenics. And it literally, if I was having a bad day, I'd go do it and I'd feel like blessed. Okay. So, it's so pretty self -care. amazing. Yes, self care. Yeah. I also discovered boxing, which I do I have every it's other good. day. Yeah. It is wonderful. Oh, yeah. You're having a bad day. Punch you, it go, out. you punch that you bag, punch it out. and right. then afterwards you, you feel good, you feel healthy. So yeah. I've discovered healthy practices outside of the industry that have nothing to do with the, the industry. Yoga has nothing to do with acting. Yeah. Boxing has nothing to do with acting. Yeah. But it's, 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 it's a healthy practice, and it's something that I, I do to keep my mind out of, oh, I didn't get that role. Yeah. Oh, yeah. you know, I, I don't, it's, the industry is terrible today. Would you say that's how you maintain at all times, or do you really still have those down times, those down moments? <sighs> you know, people also have come into my life um, as a support system, okay. for sure. I love people. Yeah. And if I'm having a bad day, I used to maybe hesitate about making a phone call. I don't do that anymore. Yeah. Uh, especially, I've, I've lost some really important people in my life. I lost my grandmother about three years ago. Yeah, she was a, just a wonderful beacon of support for me. And I, that has given me the sense that life is, life is short. You know, we don't have that much time here. And there's, what is the point of not calling that person when you wanted to call them? You know, because guess what? You might regret it one day. Because with the way, uh, you know, how fast life is, Make that call. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> Make that call to that person, especially if you're going through something like they might, th they might welcome it. You don't know. Yeah. So when I feel the need to call someone that I that I haven't spoken to in a while, or I, I could feel could help me that I uh, get through something that I'm going through, I make that call. 
and it's 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 wonderful. You know, it cheers me up, gets me out of my head, makes so, me feel. So I'm hearing you talk about self care. Yeah. I'm hearing you talk about community, the people that you love. Yes. And uh, that's how you maintain in this crazy industry. Well, I'm, there's one more thing, What's that? and it's the key: gratitude. Ah. Gratitude for everything. Yeah. And I mean yeah. down to the air that we're breathing. It's true. My mother uh, is from is Filipino. Mm -hmm. She grew up in a town that was poor, poor, yeah. dirt poor. I've been there, I went to visit it. They have nothing. And guess what these people are doing all day long? They are smiling, they are happy, they are grateful for the, the earth that they stand on. Yeah. Yeah. And that changed me when I saw that. I said, these people are grateful for everything in their life, for that tree, for, for you know, cars, for everything. Yeah. It's a, I've, I've kind of taken that on. That's one thing that I, my mother, that I'm very grateful for. She's giving me this like, love every aspect of life yeah. and, and be grateful for the things that you do have and you'll deal with the things that you don't. Wow. You know what I'm saying? No, that's, I, I feel it so strong. That's how I feel as well. I'm really excited to have you here. You know why? Because, not just because you're an actor, but you yeah. know, I'm a big fan of uh, Tyler Perry's The Have and Have Not. Also, more recently, you've done some work on Good Trouble on uh, Freeform TV, right? Yeah. God, Tyler Perry. Every time I hear Tyler Perry's name, it makes me smile. Uh, yeah. Because, you know, we talk about gratitude. That guy, you know, I say I'm grateful for life. Tyler Perry might be one of the most grateful people I know. Yeah. And that is why he's so successful. I believe that. That man, I mean, he was homeless at one time. He, yeah. he talked about how he was, he was living in his car. And look what he did. He took his spirit for life, his his talent with his, his writing and his yeah. acting and said, I'm going to make it in this world. And he did it. I can live, you know, homeless or I can make some of myself. Yeah. And he had a major faith in God. Oh yeah. I mean, oh yeah. He is. He's like. I think of Jupiter when I think of Tyler Perry. He's just got this massive personality and the heart the size of this planet. Yes. He's one of those guys. You said, told me you'd met him, right? Yes. Yeah. We worked together. Me, Tyler Perry narrated a TV special called The Passion back in 2016, and I had a you know just a speaking role as one of the actors Amazing. in the in the uh, special. Amazing. And I met him backstage afterwards, and I yes. put my hand on his shoulder and I said, Tyler remember my name and he turned around he, he could have walked off but he, he turned around and he said tell me your name again because I'm not gonna forget it yeah that's the type of person Tyler is so I know that he's magical guy yeah. and you know working with him I, we worked really close you know we were on I was on four seasons of his show the mm -hmm. haves and the have-nots and working he's right in there you know when he's well I was doing the scene his, his directing style he's right next to the actors yeah. and and he, the rapport he built on that set was family and that's why he's so successful. He makes you feel, not as an actor or an employee, he makes you feel like family. And that's yeah. why everyone enjoys working with him so much. So while we're sitting here waiting for our drinks to yeah. come, I wanted to take the conversation just a little bit deeper about some of the things that artists in general deal with in this place called Hollywood or the entertainment industry. I have only been here for a few years and personally, on a spiritual level, I feel the intensity of what fights people here spiritually on a daily basis yeah. whether it's mental whether it's emotional i think we mentioned how in this industry you hear a lot of no's a lot of rejection there's a lot of ego and a lot of vices to fight against just to be accepted and be seen and be heard when you have an atmosphere that you live in 24 7 that is that has that permeating and coming at you all the time yeah. it's not normal so when you think about what artists go through in this industry from a dark place just to fight against those vices and those elements on a daily basis. What are some of the things you've seen and how, do you, how have you seen it play out? You have two choices. You can get really, really, really depressed about how things are not going your way. It happens a lot in this town. Yeah. And you, you know, you've got, think about this, you've got every talented person in, sometimes in the world coming to this one place yeah. to try and be successful. Mm -hmm. Most of them will not be successful. How they cope with that is interesting and I've, I've seen it I've seen a lot of talented artists not make it and it's it's hard to watch and it's hard to watch them have to go through it and, and I've watched people go through really unhealthy phases because of it whether they needed to do drugs whether they resorted to alcohol but you saw their kind of spirit and zest for life yeah as bad as things can get I'm still grateful for you know, even if my if my my bank account had a dollar in it, it's like I'm grateful for that dollar. That there's yeah. a dollar something in yeah. there. You know, that's kind of how I look at life, yeah. and it's kind of gotten me through some really 
difficult times in this industry. There, there were times in this industry where I was broke, completely yeah. broke, had yeah. no money. And I was like, how am I going to do this? I put my head down, said, you know, I, I gotta, I gotta do it. I gotta fight and, and get through it. And I, perseverance and with the help of other people and, and just my faith that I could do it yes. kept me going through. Yeah. So gratitude, I'm hearing you say gratitude has been like a transformative act for you in those hard times because then you become grateful for the smallest little thing yeah. and then all of a sudden it's like something opens up. You could have said it better. It's like something opened up and said, okay, now you can receive abundance. You know, you go yeah. from this, you get you get really into your head about how bad things are, you get really specific about it, and then you say, you breathe and say, I'm grateful for X, Y, and Z. All of a sudden things open up. Yeah. And you know what, Michael? I'm thinking about all the artists who, I don't want to talk about the icons and the legends and the famous people right now. Yeah. I want to talk to the artists out there who, who hasn't made their TV show or that big yeah. break or that whatever they're looking for. Right or they're just clamoring for. See, for me, I believe that Hollywood is a system and it's one of the pillars of society. The entertainment industry is a pillar of society, just like the government, education, all of these other systems in society. Yeah. Entertainment is a major pillar in society. Yeah. And uh, when you walk into this industry, if you don't understand the purpose as to why you're there and your specific purpose in that industry and what you're there to do and yeah. to affect, it's gonna be a very hard road for you because you have so much coming at you so many different type of projects, so many different type of demands, yeah. so many no's, so, many, so much rejection, so many different personalities. Yeah. All of these spiritual vices are hitting you. You're gonna drown in that if you don't have a spiritual practice to hold you up, stand on as a foundation. You need some sort of faith or some you sort must, of belief yes. system or at least some sort of foundation that can keep, you, like a guiding light to you keep you to. going, whether it's a mentor, yes. whether it's God, whatever mm -hmm. it is, Stay, hold on to that yeah. because it, it can keep you moving forward. Yes. Even if the line is almost flat, yeah. you know, it, listen, even if it's like this, just a little bit up, keep going forward. Yeah. Because the moment you kind of let go and say, oh, whatever, it can, you can go to really bad place. You can go to drugs, you can go to alcohol, you can go to addiction, yeah. you can go to, you can become depressed. And yeah. that's the work. I've felt really, really bad. Yeah unhappy like what's the point like i don't want to go get out of bed and i i don't i wouldn't say i i i am um, diagnosed with depression but i've absolutely have felt that and i wouldn't want that on anybody because yeah. i've met people and i have friends who do have that and i feel for them my heart goes out to them because i don't want them to be in that place yeah. Yeah, ever i've seen it to, I've seen people go to dark places to the point where they wanted to end their lives yeah and i wouldn't want that on my worst enemy. Yeah, and I think that's what you just said. When people go to these really dark places, which, you know, unfortunately we've seen uh, with so many artists in the industry, we've seen so many suicides and early premature deaths and just drug overdoses and all types of things happen in this industry. And I always remind people that Hollywood is not just a system and a pillar of society, but it has a stronghold or a dominating factor that is different from every other industry in the world. This is the only industry in the world that demands your soul, that demands really all of you. Everything. When you think about it, you can be a construction worker, a school teacher, a, a police officer, a flight attendant. You could be any other thing in the world and have all of these laws, regulations, and, yeah. and limitations to protect you. This is the only industry that's set up to where True. You are really on your own. There's no school to prepare you for this. No. There's no coaching training system to prepare you for Hollywood. No, it's a gauntlet for sure. It's a And you have tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people trying to come into this system yeah. not understanding really the dominating force that controls the system. They're not spiritually prepared. Like I said, they don't have that foundation to stand on to sustain them as you maneuver the system yeah. as, as well. And so you do end up with a lot of depression, suicidal attempts, people that are not in their own skin. You know, they're not sturdy. They're not yeah. standing strong for themselves. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I agree. Coming here and trying to discover yourself while you're here in this industry, is, I think it's too difficult because there's already so much rejection and yeah. uncertainty and then you're trying to figure it out in, in a in a world, uh, in a city full of actors and artists who are also kind of lost, a yeah. lot of them. Yeah. It's, it can be really, really, it can be a shock to your system. It, it could actually be 
really unhealthy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like when I moved here, I knew exactly what I wanted to do and I knew exactly I had baby goals to get to where I wanted to be. Mm -hmm. I didn't come here and say, oh, I'm gonna figure it out. That wasn't, I wasn't gonna be that guy. Yeah. That would have been horrible because I would have been drowning. You know, I had a plan. I knew what I was gonna do and I was yeah. gonna put my best foot forward and if it works out, awesome. If not, I will figure something else out. Yeah. You know, coming here without kind of a, a plan is not a good idea, but also coming out here with not a strong belief system, either in yourself or in faith, is not a great idea. Yeah. It can, the city, unfortunately, and this, this industry can really break you down. And it's just not, your life isn't worth it. It really isn't. Yeah. It, it's not worth it. And this is why I had to tell some people that I knew that were so bogged down and so down on themselves because they weren't working in the industry. Yeah. They were like, I'm just gonna end it all. And I'm like, don't do this. It's not worth it. You have a family, you have a, a home to go back to. Don't, do, it's not worth your soul. Yeah. You, you know, it's not, it's not worth your life. So I'm, I'm, I'm praying and hoping that through conversations like this that you and I are having, yeah. that more men will be more comfortable and more, we can normalize Vulnerability. Vulnerability and an everyday lifestyle. Hey man, I'm having a bad day. How are you doing? I, yeah. I need to talk to someone right now. Yeah. That could literally save someone's life. Especially with people who you trust. Because sometimes we have a lot of so-called friends in a place like this, and we don't even tell them the truth about what's going on with us. True. And we lie to ourselves and we lie to our pe the people that love us. So yeah. conversations like this, is just so pinnacle for us because there we can break that you know that image down and that tough shield down and this fake egotistical image that we walk around with you could still have yeah. ego and be vulnerable that's the yes. thing you can do both man you yeah. could go be a badass on your set after working exactly. a long day and then have a, a moment in six months where you don't work you can have that vulnerability to say wow i'm not feeling great right now maybe i should reach out to someone to feel better about my situation. Yeah. You could do both. Yes. You could do it all. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I think through that, your community, your people that you love and trust, that can be your spiritual foundation. 100%. You can build that spiritual foundation from those few individuals right there. Yeah. And that will transcend you and push you into a whole nother place yeah. where you can be grateful and show gratitude. And, and then the universe, God will just open things up for you in a much powerful, greater way. Yeah. These are conversations that I don't see happening and you know, in Hollywood. And I wish that we could just have these on a normal basis as a lifestyle, like I said, because there's so many men out there hurting. Men it's suffering in silence. Suffering in silence. And that nothing good comes from that. No. I've learned I've learned in my life as I've gotten older, there really nothing good comes of just staying quiet about your problems. Because no. it leads to either bad behavior or it leads to bad thoughts. Yeah. And, and you don't want that. Nobody should have to suffer in silence. You should feel safe yeah. in asking for help and you should feel okay in saying, I'm not doing great right now. <laughs> yeah, dude, thank you so much for this conversation. Yeah. yeah. I really appreciate it. I appreciate you and what you're doing because you're gonna you're gonna end up saving people's lives. So thank I you. appreciate you. What's up guys? This is Eric Ashton Spooner with Champion of Your Soul. If you like this video or this segment, I want you to hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. If you wanna check our podcast out at Apple, Spotify, or anywhere you listen to podcasts, make sure you do that. Subscribe to us today and we'll see you next time. Hi. 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 Could I order the early Shirley? Early Shirley? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's not recording. Early Shirley.